Back in part one, we finished the assembly of the short block. Now it's time to install the cylinder head, intake manifold, and turbo. Try to wiggle her. Right, yeah, wiggle it. Did I forget something? something in the way that oh yeah because you don't you don't even care oh oh you're coming off that wasn't it wasn't a suggestion so what do you guys think's underneath let's go find out ready yeah am i ready yeah look at that family style Fancy valve. Look at the whiteness. Yeah, it's actually not as bad as I thought. No, it's good. It's pretty fresh. Was this a good engine? Dude, this was a perfectly good running engine. I might have left it outside. I can't believe it. <laughs> no respect. Nobody wants T1s, man. Dude, I'm telling you, T1s are what it's all about. Anybody can make power with a T2 or a T3 or a T4. Turn the drill press on. <laughs> Make it exciting, huh? Yeah. That'll be a good right. video anyway. Are you doing what size was that? Was that three? Okay, we got all the valves out of the head. Using the fancy drill press over here. It's awesome. So now it's time for the razor blade rebuild. The first step is going to be getting rid of a lot of that. That's actually the worst one. The other ones are not as bad, but you can see some of this stuff that will actually fall into the motor. And then we can address the valve job. So, part of the Richie Razor Blade rebuild. We're trying to clean the valve. The bench grinder. So, this is a before. So, set you up over here. Check it out. Good as new. So we're just going through the razor blade rebuild and part of that is using the drill that we have over here with the valves you can see. Take a look, already got a nice contact pattern on those. I'll save the last one. Do some fancy stuff, you can take a look at that. Oh, that one's pretty pitted. But the other ones look like that and now they look good. You can kind of see up here. See if I can get some light here. See both the intake and the exhaust. Nice contact patterns there. See, this is what it looked like beforehand. Got the suspect. Intake's already done. That's nice. So we'll do this final exhaust. So we'll take our valve, valve grinding compound, 
little smidge on there. Roll it around. Got a bunch on there. What I like to do is take a little dip of oil, oil the valve, we will install it in our spot, final exhaust, make sure it spins around. So you can see, normally I would grab the valve tip with the drill, but I just have a piece of rubber slipped over it because I can't get in there with the cam tower, but we can still spin it, you see. And then I just push on it from the other side, get the same results. So just spinning the valve, just spinning the valve, applying pressure with my finger, letting the lapping compound or grinding com valve grinding compound do its job. On the exhaust, I like to run it, I like to do this twice because the exhausts are pitted more than the intakes. So then I'll just reapply. That way I don't have to take the my piece of rubber tubing off of the valve. A little more compound on there. Put my hose back in my drill. Slip it out. There we go. So let's see how we did. You can see, that's the valve, that's the exhaust valve. Looks pretty nice. Got a good consistent pattern there. See how the valve looks. Well, yeah, still a couple of pits. Pretty normal for the exhaust. You can see it's got a nice contact pattern all the way around. That's going to seal up a lot better. And we didn't have to do a valve job. Okay guys, you can see there's some modifications done to the cylinder head. You can see we've got holes drilled into the coolant system at precisely this that, angle that right angle. here. Right. <laughs> yes. All right, Brian, so what's going on here? Okay, so this is called cross drilling. It also matches a hole in the gasket and the block. Okay. It's for. Were some more. of the head? Did some of the heads this already have turbo, this? Basically, this was the turbo tube modification. Okay. Um, and then I think Chrysler did it in production. Okay. So the idea is it cools better between the cylinders okay. right in here. So was this a, this is an earlier in. head that didn't have it? This is an earlier head that didn't have that. Okay. And then I think it also stops. Occasionally, you get a crack from this water jacket heading oh, this yeah, way, down. and then it hits that round hole there, and it stops. So and then it spins the crack in circles and doesn't let it, it go anywhere. It comes right? back around. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. So that's it's an easy mod. You just drill it. It's a fairly deep hole, though. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's got to go in. So, because there's meat all the way down there. Totally. So then, after we do the co this uh, coolant mod, they were guaranteed that 25 pounds of boost is fine, right? Right. The head won't warp or crack on pump gas. Right. Guaranteed. Awesome. We try to get nothing but stud. There you I'm already standing here. <laughs> Wrong one. And the head's going on. This is this is Wrong try number one. 17. <laughs> like a glove. That's right, recognize. Put well, some ARP studs for the 2.2, 2.5. Torque them in three increments. I did 50, 75, and 90. Should work out good. Hold in all the boots.
Fancy exhaust manifold? Yeah. I'll probably want to use this one. That's a T2, isn't it? Yeah, it has that notch, see? Oh, yeah. For the, the That's for the one-piece intake manifold? For this or... Yeah. yeah, both the long runner intakes have this notch right here. Okay, for the so, one piece. So or the, the early, piece. yeah, the earlier stuff didn't have right. it. it. Should come off there. Oh, you, oh, you will come off. Do you want something to, like a hammer? I'll get the jack. Yeah, you know, jack. Seems like it's got loose. A little bar. Yeah, it's loose. Here's a here's the top for ass. I'll go get a pretty bar. So if it's this much fun on the bench, how is it like in the car? Well, you don't do this. In the car. <laughs> I've never seen one run. To be we honest. did a turbo in the car once at a Lancer, and it wasn't worth. It. Yeah, freedom. It wasn't worth it. Somebody hurt their motor and put this conglomeration together, then maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I would say that's fairly common with these right. budget mobiles, you know what I mean? Yeah. I well, look how old they are. I mean, well, look, I mean, who, would, who would think that they'd change the center line on the camshaft? I, I wish I was there for those kinds of discussions. Decisions, yeah. Hey, what, you, what, what if we notes? like, what if we retard this cam or advance the cam? I don't know which way they went. By four or five degrees. I yeah, it that is. sounds like a really good idea, yeah. dude. I That'll think it screw is up those degrees. mechanics. Yeah. I think it is four degrees, three or four degrees. All right, we're doing an injector test here. What we're doing, we've got a running charger GLHS, and we've got the intake manifold going on my motor. We don't have any idea. These things have been sitting for a long time, so we want to find out whether or not they fire. So we're going to take the plug and the fuel line from a running car, hook it up to this intake manifold, and hopefully, fingers crossed, <laughs> We're going to see some fuel spraying out of there and if not we're going to tap the injectors if not we're going to tap the injectors even harder you ready yep all right We've got the third one going this is going yeah come on baby come on the first second. All right. Oh, got a little bit. Starting to get happy. Get real tappy tap. Okay, we've got the head on. Now we're starting with the intake manifold, and then we will follow that up with the exhaust manifold. Check that okay, got our intake manifold on. Exhaust manifold's bolted up. Now it's time to install the turbo. The intake and exhaust on, now we're starting on the camshaft. So I put the lash adjusters in, see under here, and the sliders. Getting the cam in, we'll get that lined up with the crank. You know, set number one TDC, put the belt on, and put the cam towers on, get it all lined up. So he went. And we're rolling. Yeah, squirty. See right there. See it? Wah! They work right like they should. Look at that. Oil squirters in the house. And it doesn't do it all the time. No. You, you got to crank it up really high. There no, you go. Oh, the oh, location is. Yeah, because. Oh, it's got to be in the right spot, huh? Yeah, watch. I'll just keep it going steady. See that? It's up. It's up. And rotate and rotate. Oh, because the um, 
the uh, cam journals have a groove in them. Right. So it can only sport at certain points. Yeah. That's good. And it's alternating side to side. Right. And right. on the base. See if it's right before the load oil, comes down. It oils after it rotates, after yeah. after uh, after opening. At least on that one that I can see. Yeah. So it oils the back side. Yep. Huh. Awesome. Hey, Wayne. Yeah. That's nice. That is nice. <laughs> okay, the engine is mostly together. <laughs> There's a few things we're still working on, but we got a lot of stuff done. Got the intake manifold on there. You can see the Shelby cool Shelby valve cover. Getting some of the accessories on there, or the mounts for them, distributor, doing a walk around. You know, there's always more stuff to do and there will be on this thing, but turbo's kind of in place there, mocked up. Back of the intake manifold, fancy pan. So hopefully, before too long, get the trans together, get a couple to the engine, and get this baby installed.